That moment when you are completely overcome by the urge to self-harm or to kill yourself is so hard and there's loads of great advice out there and I've got a safety planning video about how we try and manage that but actually the hardest and most important bit is just getting through that first minute and it's also helpful to remember that you only ever have to get through the next minute so if you can put in place some strategies that help you just to get through the next 60 seconds then you can think about the rest because sometimes the idea of the rest of the hour the rest of the day the rest of forever is too huge but the idea of just getting through the first 60 seconds feels more manageable and sure then you think about the next 60 seconds and the next and so on but in the first instance it's just the first 60 seconds so in this video I'm going to share 10 ideas that other people who struggle with self-harm and thoughts of suicide have told me that they use for getting through the first minute and some of them sound a bit odd a bit a bit you know they might sound a bit frivolous but actually it's really whatever works for you It's whatever you can do in that moment when everything feels too hard just to get through the next minute um, so the first one is just literally to set a timer. So I have a, a watch with a second timer on it and sometimes if I'm struggling I just literally give myself a minute. You could equally carry an egg timer or you can uh, use a timer on your phone but just literally have 60 seconds. Give yourself 60 seconds and say I'm not going to harm myself until 60 seconds are up and then I'm going to see how I feel after 60 seconds. So the first one is literally give yourself a minute. Um, the next one is uh, things to do with counting. So counting from 1 to 100 or 100 to one backwards or you might count to 100 in threes anything that's kind of counting so that's really easy you don't need anything to be able to do it um, and it can distract you somewhat the reason why you might count in threes or something like that is because it makes it that little bit more complicated um, which kind of takes us on to number three um, which someone told me they recite their times tables so they'll literally do their ones and then their twos and then their threes and then their fours and then their fives um, and they use that to distract them and they said that because they'd learned them like by rote as a kid um, then it had a kind of cadence and rhythm to it that they found sort of really reassuring um, and made them kind of feel safe and it gave them something that could distract them for a minute or two. Uh, the next one is to listen to a piece of music, a song, a track, a tune that you like um, and just give yourself the length of that piece of music um, in order to maybe feel just a little bit better. Um, you might equally create playlists for this kind of moment and you might, you know, play one song and then perhaps continue on and see if you can manage two, three, four. The next one feels a little bit unlikely and that is to play Candy Crush or another game. Um, and the reason why I suggest that is because you often will have that to hand and something like Candy Crush, which is really easy um, and quite addictive can be quite good because you don't need like lots of bandwidth in order to engage with the game in order to be able to do it um, but it can quite quickly absorb your attention and once you've like played one level often you want to kind of carry on um, because you know these the people who make these games are really clever and the same thing that can make you stay up till three in the morning playing Candy Crush um, yeah, I've done that. Um, is the same thing that can maybe help you get through the next minute, the next five, the next ten minutes, um, because you're so absorbed in the game. So having a game on your phone um, that's kind of mindless and you know you find a little bit addictive, that can be a great thing to turn to in those difficult moments. Next uh, is to read the page of a book. It doesn't have to be a book, but I really love to, to read fiction and I've always got my Kindle to hand. So I might read a, a page or two um, of my Kindle um, or I might listen. I listen to Audible and I might listen to a minute or two of Audible. I find them really soothing, those audio books. Um, equally, I might just pick up anything to hand and just read it. So the act of reading kind of, you know, focuses your mind elsewhere and it really doesn't matter um, what the topic is. I mean, great if you're partway through a book that you're really enjoying and it might absorb you, that's fantastic. But equally, just pick up whatever's to hand and read it. It could be the back of the cereal packet. It doesn't really matter. Just something to take your attention away from the difficult thoughts and feelings. Uh, another one, you could try using breathing exercises. So I've shared a few different breathing exercises in the past, um, but you might do something really simple, just counting your breathing, focusing in on your breathing um, and trying to get control of your breathing and feeling that little bit of control and trying to make things feel calmer using something like the box breathing um, or the finger breathing. Um, I'll link out to those other videos so that you can learn one of those if you haven't learnt it before. Connecting with your body is another really good one. So you might do a kind of grounding uh, or body scan type exercise, um, but you could equally very simply just go through counting um, and stretching each of your fingers and toes in turn. So like literally one by one, just feeling yourself wiggle it um, and, and feeling how that feels and then moving and, and doing each of your toes in turn and just being aware of your body and just taking the time uh, to feel each part, to wiggle it, to stretch it, to clench it, that kind of thing. 
this won't work for everyone because you might be like me and have some short hair um, but if you've got longer hair then um, one thing that somebody suggested to me was um, plaiting and playing with your hair um, and um, yeah she said she liked to like create little plaits in her hair and she found that really tactile um, and would help her and she would try and create lots of little plaits and then undo them and she would try and do that to kind of occupy her mind so I think that's one that could be worth trying but kind of yeah plaiting brushing doing your hair um, in some way or some other form of kind of you know self-care you might do your makeup which might sound like a really odd thing to do so you're feeling like overcome with the urge to self-harm but if you enjoy makeup or you enjoy hair or maybe you enjoy kind of some sort of massage or something like that then kind of showing that bit of kindness to self um, can be uh, it, like the complete opposite of, of self-harm um, and can try and sort of flip you out of that feeling another suggestion that was made to me was somebody who said that when they're overcome with this feeling then they um, unlace their shoes so they take the laces out of their shoes and then they put the laces back into their shoes um, and they found that you know because they always had laced shoes on this was someone who was struggling at school they would go to the toilets they would unlace and relace their shoes um, and they just had learned that the amount of time it took them to take the laces out and put them back in again was kind of how long uh, it took them to calm down um, and then the, the final suggestion is that if you can to reach out to someone um, and depending on where you are and who you are and what your support network looks like that might be easier or harder but there's always someone that you can talk to um, so it's worth carrying with you the, the phone number of different crisis line um, yeah so there are various kind of websites helplines text lines that you might be able to contact and the good thing about them is they're often 24 7 so it doesn't matter if you're not able to get someone on the end of the phone but equally you might go and talk to um, a, a trusted friend or adult if you're in a situation where they're nearby you don't necessarily need to tell them you're self-harming just actually just try and connect with another human being uh, you might pick up the phone to someone you might whatsapp or text someone make sure you've got other backups in case they don't answer or in case it's the middle of the night so that's why it's good to have those those crisis lines uh, in uh, to hand as well um, and then the other thing is that you could connect over social media so for me sometimes um, if I'm really struggling and I'm finding it hard to reach out to people I feel like I don't want to be a burden to them and that kind of thing they never feel I am a burden and for the record if you feel like that it's not true the, the people who care about you will always want to help you um, but you sometimes in that moment don't feel able to reach out um, but what I often have found that I can do is to reach out via social media and it doesn't necessarily have to be a ah, I'm in crisis help me but it can be you know a simple please send kittens uh, kind of message and um, people often will be incredibly uh, kind and caring so connect in whatever way you can um, with other people and yeah that fi the final one I just kind of thought bearing in mind I just said please send kittens um, watching YouTube videos uh, can be a great one to distract you too so you might want to save into your watch later list videos that you know might make you smile or otherwise occupy your mind so I love watching videos of climbing my husband watches videos of, squ of squash my kids like watching morgues like whatever floats your boat and it might be you know my less kitten videos that's totally fine remember here the aim is not to be doing something like productive and amazing with our time is literally to get through the next minute unscathed if we can so that then hopefully we're able to put our safety planning into place so give those ideas a go and please do leave a comment letting me know what ideas work for you because I could do another video like this in the future with more ideas uh, that you find helpful and um, be prepared to try different things accept that some things will work and some things won't we're all different and also accept that some Sometimes something will work for you one day and not, other, and not another day. So have a few different ideas that you might turn to. But always remember, in those crisis moments when everything feels too hard, you only ever have to get through the next minute. You can think about the rest after that, but just the next minute. So whatever it takes to get through the next minute. Good luck. And if you're watching this, then you're clearly either on a journey yourself um, or you're supporting someone who is. So either well done or thank you, depending on which of those it is. Um, and I just want to offer a bit of reassurance, really. It might be that things feel really difficult at the moment and you can't imagine them getting better. Um, but things have felt different in the past and they may feel different again in the future. Um, try and stick with it. Um, yeah, keep going. Good luck.